good news for Premiere Pro users today because Premiere Pro is now supporting hardware acceleration for exporting, which means now you can use your dedicated GPUs, may it be Nvidia or AMD GPUs, to help with your rendering. Now, over the past couple of years, we have only had GPU accelerated effects in the editing process, but when it comes to rendering, the GPU is pretty much useless. We've all known that with Premiere Pro, rendering is only CPU based. So really the only way to get faster render times back then was to have a really powerful CPU. But today things have changed. If you have a really powerful GPU, now you can use that to your advantage when it comes to rendering. Hardware encoding on Premiere Pro utilizes your NVIDIA hardware. I believe it uses NVIDIA encoding or NVENC, N-V-E-N-C, to encode your rendered videos, which is kind of cool. This feature comes in with Premiere Pro's 14.2 version. So if you haven't installed or updated your Premiere Pro, please do so if you want to use this feature. Make sure that your updated version is on version 14.2. They have the same feature for Adobe Adobe Media Encoder, so update that too as well, If especially if you're rendering on Adobe Media Encoder frequently. But without further ado, let's see how much faster your rendering times can be with this hardware acceleration encoding. Now before we start, please note that I have an i7-9700K CPU, Intel CPU, and an RTX 2070 Super GPU. So it might be different for you if you have a different kind of setup. Maybe you have a stronger GPU, stronger CPU. I don't know how that plays in, but we'll see. Now for this first test, I'm just going to put a screen recorded video. It's a gameplay video. It's 18 minutes. I'm just going to put it in Premiere Pro and then export it without any color grading or effects on the video or any effects on the audio is just that and basic transcoding back into 4k video and we'll see how much faster that is when you use hardware encoding so here i have a project pulled up as i said it's just a single clip a single 18 minute clip and i'm basically just going to export this without any effects whatsoever now please bear in mind this hardware acceleration encoding only works for h.264 formats or HEVC aka H.265. So I'm going to use H.264. Let me rename this for a while. Renamed my file. I'm going to check render at maximum depth because why not? And there you have it. You can now enable hardware encoding. Now before this, your hardware encoding settings might be grayed out. Even if you could use it, it would be using your iGPU instead of your dedicated GPU. But now if you hover over hardware encoding, it says it utilizes available NVIDIA hardware for quicker encoding. So yeah, that's what we want. I'm going to switch my profile to high because that's what I usually do for higher quality. Now, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but when I check high 10, I can't use hardware encoding because my hardware does not support it. I don't know if it's the same for other graphics cards. So let me know in the comments below if you can actually do high 10 with hardware encoding. That would be cool. Level 5.2, I'm gonna do CBR 100. This is what I usually do if I upload to YouTube. I'm going to check use maximum render quality and I am going to queue this in Adobe Media Encoder. I don't know, I've always thought that rendering in Adobe Media Encoder is better or faster, but I don't know if that's actually true. All right, so it's already in queue in the Adobe Media Encoder and now we'll start rendering. Now, while that is rendering, I'm just going to show you guys what's happening behind the hood. I'm going to open up Task Manager and on the performance tab, we can see our usages of CPU and GPU. So as you can see here, my CPU is currently at 100% utilization. That, that was normal back then. It's still normal here. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but what I really want you guys to see is this GPU section. I mean, the overall utilization is nearly 100%. That is, that is amazing. And if you go into the GPU section, you see that a lot of it is for video encoding, which is sick. I mean, I've never seen GPU usage that is close to 100% when it comes to video rendering. All right, so the video finished rendering with hardware encoding and it took 10 minutes and 29 seconds. Now, this was originally an 18 minute clip and it took nearly half real time to render it with hardware encoding. I think that's amazing. I think that's really fast. I mean, I've never seen speeds as near as real time and now I'm getting half real time. That's amazing. 
Now we are going to render the same thing, but we're going to do it with software encoding only and see how long that takes. Renamed my file and now I'm just going to switch from hardware encoding to software encoding. The rest of the settings will be the same. The only difference here is just software encoding and hardware encoding. All right, we have the video queued in Adobe Media Encoder and we are going to start rendering. And as you can see here in the task manager, my CPU is at 100% utilization, but my GPU is only about 30%. Huge difference there. All right, the video has finished rendering and God, it took so long. I really did not expect for it to render this long. With software encoding, this video took 55 minutes and four seconds, which is also unbelievable. I mean, I've always thought it to be a little faster than that, at least maybe like twice real time, but this is like three times real time. But to compare 54 minutes on software encoding with 10 minutes, with hardware encoding, that's like five times faster, which is crazy. All right, but again, this is a 4K 60 FPS project or video. So it might be a little different with different frame rate settings or different bit rate settings. Even I use constant bit rate of 100 Mbps. I'm pretty sure that if you set it to a lower bit rate, it's gonna be a much more faster. Apart from that, there are also other factors that play into your render times. And those are the effects that you put on your videos. Which brings us to our second test. I'm going to try to render a video that has a lot of effects on it, like color grading, different aspect ratios, the addition of music tracks, audio effects, video effects, and even after effects compositions, texts, basically a really loaded video project. So let me pull that up for a second. Now I have the project pulled up. This is actually a previous YouTube video I made about these pair of studio monitors that I just bought. If you guys want to check that out, you can just click here or there. I don't know. But yeah, as you can see, there are tons of cuts in this project, adjustment layers with color grading, music tracks, audio effects, video effects, and even text and one After Effects composition. So it's got a lot in this project. So we're going to see how much faster hardware where encoding can help you render if you have all these kinds of effects in your project. So again, I'm going to use the same kind of settings, rename this for a while, use hardware encoding, profile high, level 5.2, CBR 100, use maximum render quality. I am going to queue this in Adobe Media Encoder. It's now queued in Media Encoder and let's start rendering. I forgot to tell you guys, this is a 4K video at 24 frames per second and about six and a half minutes long. Also, I want to show you guys the different between having a project with no effects on it as compared to a project with a lot of effects on it, there is a difference between its GPU usage. So as you can see on my task manager here, my CPU is near 100%, 80 to 90%. But look at my GPU. It's a lot different from our first test previously. The total usage is only 30 or 40%-ish. And back in the first test, our video encoding for our GPU was high up in the 90s to 100s but now it's only around 30 to 40 percent and i believe it's because there's a lot of effects going on so you kind of have to process that before encoding the video so you couldn't encode as quickly as you could with a video that has no effects all right the video has finished rendering and it took 24 minutes and 26 seconds this is with hardware encoding and it's nowhere near real time it was actually four four times real time. And this is with hardware encoding. So I cannot imagine how much longer software encoding would be. Now again, this is with a lot of effects. This is 4K 24 frames per second, exporting at a constant bit rate of 100 Mbps. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, except that we are going to use software encoding to export the same video project. So yeah, that's the only thing I'm gonna change here. The rest of the settings would be the same. Add it to the queue and let's start rendering. Again, I'm just gonna show you guys what's going on behind the hood. My CPU is at 100%, that's normal. 
my GPU is still at 30%, which is kind of the same. So I don't know if it's going to be closer to that hardware encoding time as compared to a video without effect. I mean, as we saw in the first test, hardware encoding makes it faster by like five times. So I'm guessing that in this case, in a video with a lot of effects, hardware encoding wouldn't bring the render time much faster, at least not five times faster. It's going to be faster, I guess, but not as much as five times faster but we'll see. All right, so the video has finished rendering on software encoding and it took 38 minutes and 18 seconds. Now the hardware encoding didn't even bring it to half the time, but it is faster than software encoding at least. So yeah, the cut and render times when you're using hardware encoding really depends on what you're working with. As we saw today, we saw render times that are five times faster with hardware encoding in a certain situation and and in another situation, it's not even half the time. So again, it really depends on what you're working on. It depends on if you have your effects on, your videos and audio, if you have a lot of stuff going on. It depends on your resolution, your frame rate again. But I have to say, this hardware encoding really makes a significant difference in terms of render times. And I'm really happy that Adobe has jumped on this bandwagon. I mean, DaVinci Resolve has had this for over years now. And it's finally time Adobe has caught up with DaVinci Resolve. Oh, and one more thing. I know that hardware encoding doesn't work on VBR 2 pass. It only works on VBR 1 pass and constant bit rates or CBR. And it doesn't work on high 10 profiles, at least for me. And again, your render times would be different if you have a different setup than I have. But all in all, you should expect to see a huge or significant drop in your render times. And I'm really excited to use this feature for my next videos. Yeah, if you're doing like gaming videos that doesn't have a lot of effects like color grading, at least it should be really beneficial. And considering that you're playing games and making gameplay videos, you should have a good enough GPU. So that's really going to help. If you guys don't have a good enough GPU, maybe you should consider buying one or upgrading your current GPU or adding another one. If you're already playing games and already have a beefy GPU, that's this is a handy thing to have for someone like me. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something new. And I hope you guys try this out and see for yourself the, the improvements hardware encoding can bring you. Again, this is Arnix, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Should I get another GPU? Should I get a better GPU? I probably should. I probably should.